Google Analytics recently released a new feature called Data Redaction. If you accidentally sometimes track things such as visitors' name or email, then data redaction is a good safeguard to prevent that from happening. However, there are also some nuances that you must be aware of. And at the end of this video, I will share my best practices. So let's take a look. You can find data redaction settings by going to the admin section of your Google Analytics, then data streams, select your website data stream, and here you should click redact data. Here you will find two features. The first one is email. So Google Analytics will try to remove email addresses from certain parameters like page location, for example. So if some page URLs on your site contain actual email addresses, then Google Analytics will try to remove them. That is possible if this option is enabled. However, there is a risk of false positives. For example, if your page URL contains some text which is not email, but it looks like email, like here where we have some text, then add another text and then .it, which looks like a legit email, then Google Analytics 4 will also remove this kind of information from the parameter value. And another feature is that maybe you have some other URL parameters that you want to exclude from Google Analytics, then you can use the URL query parameters option where you can enable it and then list up to 30 query parameters and they will be redacted. But keep in mind that this whole redact data feature does not work with all the possible parameters that you're tracking in Google Analytics 4. It will apply only to page location, page refer, page path, link URL, video URL, and form destination. So if you're sending some custom parameter and it accidentally contains an email address, then it will not be removed by Google Analytics 4 automatically. If you want to exclude certain parameters, you just need to start typing them here. For example, maybe your URL contains first name. So then you enter it, you hit the enter key on your keyboard and then add more. So here you can enter up to 30 query parameters. If you're not familiar with query parameters, they are parts of the URL that come after the question mark. A URL might contain no query parameters. A URL might contain one parameter, like here we have email and then equals and its value, or it might have multiple parameters. Each parameter is connected with the ampersand. So according to the terms of service of Google Analytics 4, you cannot send personally identifiable information to Google Analytics 4. Also, this applied to the older versions. And in this case, you would be sending the personal information such as email, first name or last name, even if it is accidental. So with data redaction, you can solve this problem, at least to some extent. Instead of sending email or first name or last name or something else, Google Analytics can redact those values so that this would, at least to some extent, increase your compliance with privacy regulations. And of course, with the terms of service of Google Analytics. So if some page URLs on your website contain, let's say, an email parameter, and you have enabled the redaction of email addresses, Google Analytics will do the following modification. It will still keep the name of the parameter, but the value will be redacted. That's exactly what you would see in your reports, the word redacted. Here's an example of the page URL that contained the first name parameter. And since I included first name in the settings, like here, then Google Analytics turns its value into this one. If you create a new property of Google Analytics, then email redaction will be enabled by default. But if you have created a property before the October of 2023, then you need to go to the settings of your GE4 data stream and enable it manually. You can also test your redaction and there is a section right here. So for example, I have entered the first name as a query parameter that I want to redact. Then I will click this test redaction option and then I will enter, let's say, example.com and then question mark first name equals test. And then if I click preview redacted data, it will show me this. What about if I enter the full URL? And now it is redacted because I've entered a valid URL. So this is fairly useful because you can preview how your data will look like before you actually publish these changes live. So once you're ready with your setup, you can then click save and this will go live. And once you configure data redaction, you will start seeing some green elements right here that say which feature of redact data is active. If you're not sure what kind of query parameters do you have and if they contain some sensitive data, you could quickly build a report and check it yourself. So in Google Analytics, go to Explore, then click blank, 
Then in the dimensions, click the plus, and here you can enter page path and select page path plus query string, or you might select page location, that will work as well. Basically, in this case, we're looking for some page URL dimension that contains the question mark and then might contain some parameters. So click here, click import, then in metrics, you can say, I don't know, event count sounds good, then click import and then add these two elements right here. So I just double clicked them and they were added to the report. Now here in the filters, I will need to click and select only those values where question mark is present. So I will click here. And then I will select contains question mark, and then click apply. So now I get all URLs that contain various parameters. And then I can just maybe see more rows like 500, for example. And then I can take a look and see if there are any sensitive parameters that I should include in the data redaction. In my case, I don't have any, but maybe in your case, you have first name, email, last name, or something like that. Then you could repeat the same process, but with other parameters such as page refer, form destination, video URL, link URL, and so on. This is a bit manual, but it's still worth to check this. However, if you rely just on this feature, if you want to clean up your data, I would say this is not the best idea. I mean, you should definitely still use the data redaction. However, there are some problems or limitations in this case. The first one is that the parameter is not entirely removed. The parameter still remains, but its value is redacted. So in this case, this is a home page, and this is a home page. And I still have two different rows for the same page. So if you want to aggregate your data even better, ideally, you would like to exclude the email parameter completely, and then just have one row for the home page. Unfortunately, data redaction cannot be used for this particular purpose. That's why one of my older tutorials still remain valid. So below this video, I will post a link to my article where I show how to completely exclude query parameters in Google Analytics 4. It requires a workaround. And here I'm using Google Tag Manager. So the concept is basically that you install a custom template in Google Tag Manager, then you list the parameters that you want to completely exclude. And then you override the page location parameter in Google Analytics. And this time you're sending the value of the page URL that does not contain the unwanted parameters at all. Right now, this screenshot is a bit outdated, but I will update this article soon. So if you ask me, I would say the best option would be to use the combination of both features. So the first one is definitely that you should still exclude manually some parameters that you really don't want to use. And then as a safeguard, it also makes sense to keep these features enabled right here, you know, just in case something somehow slips through the cracks, then data redaction will also redact that information and will keep you safer. However, you need to keep in mind that this feature works client side. So basically what it means is that when Google Analytics tracking code is activated, it is looking for particular query parameters or email addresses in certain parameters and then removes them on the spot. Meaning that the initial data with sensitive information will not even reach Google servers. The data redaction happens in the browser of a visitor. However, if you are sending some data with measurement protocol, which means that you're sending data from your server to Google Analytics, data redaction will not work. If you're using data import, and that import is available right here, data redaction will also not apply. So you still need to be pretty careful with what you're sending. But if you ask me the best solution, or the ideal solution would be to talk with your developers, your coworkers, and then find a solution to not have the sensitive user information in the URL at all. Because on some older websites, for example, when the form is submitted, the page URL contains sensitive information such as first name, last name, and so on. But your developers of the website could use a different method of how the form is developed. And those parameters would not be visible in the URL. Because keep in mind, if some information which is sensitive is visible in the URL, then not only Google Analytics will get that data, but also other tracking codes that you're using on the site. And this data redaction feature will apply only to Google Analytics requests. So from the compliance standpoint, you are still risking a lot.
So for the end of this video, just one quick note is that when you enable data redaction, it will not apply to historic data that you have collected in Google Analytics 4. It will apply only to newly collected data because as I've said, data redaction happens directly in the tracking code client side in your visitor's browser. And that's how we can use data redaction in Google Analytics 4. There's no doubt, this is a much needed feature. However, if you want to completely remove unwanted query parameters from GE4, then my workaround in Google Tag Manager is still needed. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GE4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.